Hey y'all, hi. It's time for another video about new makeup releases. And boy, do I have a lot to say today. I'm going to be giving my hot takes on the makeup that's new to the market. If this is your first time to my channel, I'm so glad that you clicked on this video and that you're watching it. My name is Hannah. I really love makeup. I like assessing new makeup releases with a bit of a critical eye because I feel like, I don't know, the makeup industry really encourages consumers to just buy, buy, buy. I personally like to have an edited collection and to take care with what I decide to acquire. So I assess new makeup releases through that lens. If that sounds good to you, if you enjoy this while you're watching and you're not subscribed, I hope you will subscribe. And now let's go ahead and get into the meat of the video. Y'all, before I jump into talking about the new makeup releases, I'm just gonna take a minute or two to talk about something personal. If you don't care and you wanna skip, I'll put a timestamp down below. It'll just be a number. If you click on that number, it'll take you right to the beginning of the discussion of new makeup releases. It has been a couple of weeks since I filmed. This is my first filming session back since a pretty long break that I took because I was out of town for a couple of weeks. So everything that you've seen on my channel basically since mid-February has been pre-filmed, like was filmed during the beginning of February. And over the course of these two weeks that I've been away, the news of the world has gotten increasingly worse, increasingly more distressing. And as that has happened, especially the news about what's going on in Europe with Russia invading Ukraine, it has gotten more and more surreal for me to be editing and posting the videos that I filmed before any of that started happening. And it actually got to the point where I felt like I needed to comment about it. So in Friday's video, I pinned a comment underneath the video. That was the last video that was pre-filmed. So some of what I'm about to say was already said in that comment, but I just wanted to say it on camera. It is always totally surreal to be making beauty content in times of large-scale violence and fear. There is always violence and fear in the world. And you know, it's always surreal to be making beauty content in this context, the context of the world we live in. But when it suddenly changes, when something dramatic like this happens, and when it starts to shift like the global zeitgeist, it become that sur the surrealness of it becomes sharper. And I feel like it's gotten sharp to the point that I just need to talk about it with you on camera just for my own sake and maybe for all of our sakes, those of us who are part of this beauty community. I know that this content, the content that I make and, and the content that my peers make, I know that it has value to a lot of you. It has value to me. Me doing this has completely changed my life, and I know that me doing this has changed some of your lives too. But at times like this, it starts to feel like, it can start to feel like this work is fundamentally unrelated to that which is the most real, or that which is the most important in the world. And as a thinking woman, that puts me in a weird feeling position. Of all the things that are weird about this work, the hundreds of things, this is the weirdest. Sometimes it just feels like mind boggling to be sitting here chattering on about makeup when the world is what it is. And this is one of those times, but this is my work. And so I continue to do it just the way that, you know, cashiers at the grocery store continue to, to show up and, and check you out when you buy your gro groceries and veterinarians continue to show up and, and see your pets. It's like we all keep showing up to do our work. And the thing is, intellectually, I know that this work actually isn't unconnected to that which is most fundamentally real. Everything I want to protect, you know, joy, freedom, empowering women and non-binary people and men who have a relationship with stylized femininity. Beauty is powerful. Femininity is incredibly powerful. These are forces that have gone repressed and uncelebrated for too long. And I do think that elevating them, celebrating them, connecting over them is a way of pushing back against the darkness of forces like autocracy and fascism. And talking about the makeup industry with a critical eye 
is a way of making space for us to breathe and be our best selves in the context of our capitalism, which is also a troubling place. So when I think it through, which I have done thousands of times, which I'm always doing, you know, as this is my work, when I think it through, I remember that this work, though it can seem shallow, it actually does have a lot to recommend it. But it's hard to feel that way right now. There are many, many more serious and important things in this world than new makeup releases. <laughs> there just are. I know that you know that already. And I also know that you know that I know it. But sometimes it just has to be said to clear the air and just to make sure that we're all on the same page about what we're doing here. Being together, connecting with each other, finding joy, this stuff both matters and doesn't matter, right? Or rather, this stuff both doesn't matter and really does matter. And I, I appreciate you so much for understanding, appreciating the uncanniness of Beauty YouTube and just being here with me through the weirdness. You are so precious to me. Your life is so precious. And I just hope that you're all finding ways to take care of yourself right now, even though it's so hard. And I'm doing my best to do that too. Even though it is really hard to show up and film in times like these, it's also a way of taking care of myself. And I'm trying to do that through it. But I just can't do it without talking about it. I just, I can't, I compartmentalize a lot in this work, but there, there come, it's like a bridge too far, you know? There just comes a point past which I, I have to just sit, clear the air and be like, this is weird, so that we can move into doing the work, which again, I do think is, it, it is fundamentally kind of more than the sum of its parts. So uh, thank you for listening. If you sat through that and uh, thank you for understanding. Now I feel like we can move on to talk about new releases. There is a lot going on right now that's interesting. And I'm not going to forget to move to the side. Actually, Joe, he, he got me all set up to film, got the lights, checked the white balance and everything. And then right before he left, he was like, don't forget to move to the side. <laughs> like, it was so cute. I, I don't even, I haven't even mentioned it to him. I think he just noticed when he was doing the sound on the last new makeup releases that I, as he said, made a meal out of <laughs> scoochy scooching to the side. So um, I guess I've made an even, a, a feast out of it just now. Let's do it. I'm really proud of myself. Actually, I might not have remembered if Joe hadn't said something. Okay, so as I said, I I've been gone for a while, or I, I said it during my little part that you might have skipped if you used the timestamp. But I've been out of town for a couple of weeks, which means I haven't been filming, and I have not been able to watch as much YouTube as usual, and I have just paying, I have been paying only the lightest of attention to what's going on. So prepping for this video was a real trip because I just dove into all of the announcements over the past couple of weeks. And I kind of liked that because I was looking at it sort of from the outside and I immediately saw what I think is a very powerful trend in color stories. And that's pretty much what I'm going to start out talking about. I feel like all the eyeshadow palettes look the same, or at least like they all look this, they're all sort of part of one family, but then they're like sort of two sides of the family, but they they are all, it's a very cohesive moment right now in eyeshadow color stories, at least from where I'm sitting, that's how it looks. And it was a little bit difficult to figure out which one to start with, but I, I settled on this one from Byredo. Byredo makeup, which I have actually a couple of times I've been like, should I review Byredo makeup? And I've always gotten a huge response. It's like, you guys really want me to review this brand. So it is in the back of my mind. There's a lot going on right now. Full disclosure, the reason that I was out of town is that Joe and I are looking for trying to figure out where we're going to go next. We're, we're going to move. So we went to the place we're going to move to and rented a house and we're going to be moving soon. So it, there's a lot going on in the world. Everything is upside down. And also in my personal life, every single thing is like unhinged. But there's also a lot that's good. It's like the highs are very high. The lows are very low. It's just a lot, which is just to say in this moment that I am hoping to review Byredo sometime. 
time. It's just this probably isn't the month for it because I there, I cannot do anything other than that which which must be done. You know what I mean? Like I can only see the very, the one thing or the the hundred things that are right in front of my eyes. There just isn't really time for like speculation about what I might do right now. But I I've heard you and you want me to review this brand and I agree with you that it would be a good thing to do. I feel like this whole video is gonna be like this. I, I'm like I'll put a timestamp down below in case you want to skip it, but the timestamp is just like to the last two seconds of the video. <laughs> you like skip and it's like, thank you for watching. <laughs> I just, I really cracked myself up with that one. The idea, <laughs> the idea of putting a timestamp that's like, if you, if you don't want to hear me blabbering, click the timestamp below and then you click it and the video is over. <laughs> oh my God. I make myself cry a lot when I'm filming, but I've never made myself laugh so hard that I teared up while there's no one else in here. I, it's like completely psychotic. Okay. So this, I picked this by Rado palette because I feel like it. It's, it epitomizes the color story of which I am on which I'm about to expound, right? It it's has some neutrals, but they're grayish. This one doesn't the neutrals in this aren't as cool toned as they are in most of the palettes, but it does have some grayish neutrals and it's got a teal, a version of a teal. And then it's got these like burgundies and reds and peaches kind of, you know? as does ev literally every palette that's been announced recently. And some of them have the, the color saturation turned up and they're brighter. Some of them have it turned down and they're grayer, more slate. But they're all doing this. Mark my words, they all are, and you're about to see it. This palette in and of itself, usually by Rado, it makes, really makes me like, scoot to the edge of my seat. I don't really love the choice they made with the green for the mascara here. It To me, it cheapens it a little bit. I don't even really love, the, I do like the simplicity of the rose that they have on the cover, but I just feel like they could have elevated this a little bit aesthetically packaging wise. The color story, I don't mind. I actually like the color story that everybody is releasing right now. That's part of why I've been excited to talk about it in this way. Teal is a very approachable version of blue to me personally. And I like the sort of grounding burgundies. It's like avoiding being neutral with a pop of blue by having the reds as well. But because there's the neutrality and these approachable colors, it's really, really versatile, this color story. And I do think it's really pretty. This particular palette though has like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight eyeshadows that look like almost the same color to me. And I really don't know what they're doing with that. I mean, maybe it's different when you swatch it in person. Maybe the textures reveal like a dramatic difference. Even that said, like, I feel like you could edit this down to half its size and it would still offer all of the same thing. But that said, I just swiped through to the photograph of all of the swatches, which I'll put up here. And I just, I love it. I think it looks very beautiful and I kind of want it. And if money were no object, I would probably buy it. And maybe this is the thing that I will review if I review by Rado sooner than I think I'm going to. <laughs> but I just can't imagine doing anything. Maybe that's the problem. I just can't imagine doing anything, right? Except for con completing the project of filming this video. So I have no idea what I'm going to do an hour from now, let alone what I'm going to review this month. Okay, this though. All right, moving on to the second palette that's doing all of the same things. This is Nabla's new release. This has, again, the neutrals grounding it, the, the cranberry burgundies, the teal, versions of teal, and it even has that like sparkly dark purple and like a blackened purple, which the Byredo one also pretty much had. I mean, they honestly look so the same. Like it's really the same idea. This, however, also has a little bit of mustard, which I'm not sure that we had over in Byredo. Ah! Kind of, like the golds, they're so similar, y'all. But the mustardy browns in this, I really like. Like, they really have that frisson, 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 frisson. Frisson. They have that frisson. 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 I think frisson is probably the English pronunciation. Frisson. And frisson maybe is close. No, that says the British. Frisson. Frisson. All right, I'm going to say frisson from now now on in every video. <laughs> the yellow, the mustardy browns in this palette have to me that frisson of excitement around them. 
and within them, right? That's like the, that mustardy yellow that we see in the Natasha Denona gold palette. Dijon, you know what I mean? It's really good. I like this palette. Even though this picture is a little bit faded looking and grungy, and I'm not even sure what the entire thing looks like because the pictures are really zoomed in on this post on Trend Mood, and, and so I can't quite tell exactly what the palette looks like, like the packaging and stuff. I like everything that I'm seeing. It has this very kind of modern art, geometric, tiled cover that's beautiful, and it they've done this really amazing thing with the stripes of color across they're showing you one group of four one quad that could all work together and those stripes across are sort of like in a color realm but then each quad each quad quadrant of the palette makes a quad and they've drawn squares around that to indicate quads that might work and it's come out beautifully I kind of want it which is so bananas because again there's so much going on in my life right now that it's hard to imagine using eyeshadow. Really? You know what I mean? Like everything is, every, it feels like everything doesn't exist right now. So I haven't actually found myself over here being like, I want that. I want this very much lately because I'm just so overwhelmed. That means that when I want something, it's like a fundamental. It's not this like fantasy, imagining how it would fit in my life, thinking about the practical use and how it dovetails with all of my needs and what I already have and stuff. It's like, I want it because of this from the gut. Like I want it from the gut more than the Byredo one. And I, I just appreciate the the innovation and the way that, and I feel like other makeup brands have done this before. I think Natasha Denona is always saying like every, maybe it was just the star palette or maybe it's every palette. It's like every diagonal can be an eye look and every quad can be an eye look. I mean, th this idea has been tossed around before. They've just executed it so well. I like the way the colors work together. It definitely seems practical to me. Although the top two rows are really similar and the top two quads are really similar. That's my only criticism of this. But my hot take is that it's the thing, it's my favorite thing I've seen from Nabla in a long time. And I actually think this is my favorite manifestation of what I what I consider to be the color story on the market at the moment. There is something a little bit grammatically unfortunate about the title, though. It's called Read My Mind. The thing is, though, that in English, the word read, like the past tense of read, and the word read, they look the same. We depend on context to figure out which one it is. So R-E-A-D, if you just put that word in isolation, we don't know whether you're saying read or read. And in this title, it actually is in isolation. The title of the palette could be read my mind, like something that you did and was done in the past, or it could be read my mind, like the command. There's truly no way of knowing unless you know. And I feel like that, mm, it's not ideal, right? Maybe could have workshopped it a little bit more. But the palette is, I think it's something special. What do you think? Okay, let's talk about ColourPop Rock Candy, which I feel like exemplifies what I'm talking about, the color trend, the color, the eyeshadow palette trend, but it's just a little, it has the saturation turned down a little bit. So those reds have turned into like washy mauves and muted burgundy browns. The teals have turned into like grayish slate teals and the mustards have turned into these like really pale sandy colors. It is still beautiful and the the textured shiny shades in, at least in this picture look really pretty and I could see this being an incredibly practical mega palette for someone, for some people, for many people, including me. And it has cool tones in it and it's not really very much a mix of cool and warm. It's a pretty cool toned palette but it has enough to hang its hat on so that it does doesn't just become super icy to the point where it looks dated. I really do like it. But in the context of these other palettes that are coming out that have a similar color story, but that just have a little bit stronger of a point of view, it's not really holding its own. Another ColourPop palette, Darth Vader inspired. What is the palette called? Is the palette called This Will Be A Day Long Remembered? Is it just called the Darth Vader palette? Anyway, it's curious because this is a separate release from ColourPop, but it's doing all of the things that I've been talking about, right? It's got a burgundy. It's a very, very edited version. This is like a super edited version of both the Nabla palette and the Byredo 
Byredo palette and the other ColourPop palette, but it's a little bit more graphite, more slate than either the Byredo or the Nabla. Still though, it's like the baby version of all of them. It's got the dark burgundy, it's got the red, it's got some like paler shade, pale, almost like sandy taupe shades. It's also got these slate, I, this is, doesn't have a strong teal, but I feel like the, the slate matte in the bottom left-hand corner has like enough blue in it, especially when it blends out that it still belongs in the lineup. You know what I mean? It can still come to the party. And then the kind of like like bronzy, goldy, silvery, crushy color. That's a, actually a shade that I really like. I mean, my, I feel like my favorite eyeshadow color is like bronze and silver and gold all mixed together, but a little bit, a little murky and speckly. You know what I mean? There is a shade right here, the one on the left-hand row that's in the middle, that looks like that. And a lot of these palettes have that as a presence. I probably wouldn't have talked about this if I wasn't talking, because it's a little bit ho-hum. I probably wouldn't have talked about this if I wasn't talking about this color trend, like this makeup eyeshadow, <laughs> makeup eyeshadow, post in, get it together. If I wasn't spotting this trend, this one might have gone unremarked upon by me, but I feel like it's an interesting member of the family. And now we're moving into the more colorful dynamic side of the family, but I feel like I'm going to make an argument that it all kind of fits together. This is an interesting release, the Hindash. And actually Hindash, the first palette, I didn't find it aesthetically beautiful, the first Hindash palette, but I saw what it was doing. And I think that I discussed on camera the fact that I could see it being really useful and practical and there was something that was of attracting me about that. I decided I didn't personally want to buy it though because it's se it seems like a one and done. Like if you're just going to have one palette for everything, this would be great. That's just not my life. I have so much different kinds of makeup, so many different kinds of makeup. I'm always testing stuff. I'm always mixing it up. And so things that are like all you need, all like the last palette you'll ever need in one palette, that kind of thing doesn't appeal as much to me personally anymore, but I feel like that's the kind of thing that I tend to appreciate the most from a distance because it's got that pra those practical qualities and I could see myself in an alternate universe where I didn't have this job only buying stuff like that. So I really liked Hindash's first release, but I was like, hmm, I wonder if this is going to do well because it looks a little bit weird. I haven't really, I don't know how it's doing in terms of how it's selling, but I have seen so many other beauty content creators on YouTube use that palette over and over again and speak really highly of it. So it seems like it's gone over really well with people who have tried it. And, and because of that, the brand has kind of stayed alive in my mind and I've continued to be curious. So this palette is the second release from Hindash, the Monochromance, which has no one thought of that before. Like, is this the first time that we've heard Monochromance? Because kudos, round of applause, touche, well done, hats off Hindash. I just think that should not have gone untapped for as long as it did. Monochromance. I wish I'd thought of it myself. So it's a face and eye palette like the first one made to mix wear or, or wear alone as full monochromatic looks. And you know I love a monochromatic look. And it's got, y'all, listen to me, the, the sandy taupe, the kind of mustardy gold, the pinkish red, the reddish burgundy, and the teal. The only thing that this has a strong presence of that isn't really in the other palettes we've talked about is the purple. But if you're talking about taking that color story that I think is trending, the like neutrals with reds with a pop of teal kind of, and some like olivey stuff, mustardy olivey. If you're turning up the brightness on that, the saturation, it makes sense that like a purple might might emerge. You know what I mean? And I feel like that's what's happened here. It definitely doesn't look exactly the same the way that they all look the same as each other, the palettes I've talked about so far, but I feel like it can hang. It is like the wild artist cousin of those palettes. Needless to say, I'm also intrigued by this shimmer, ultra shimmer, universal, universal multi-pearl champagne multi-use liquid shimmer boy tears. Oh, the other thing that I love about this release, sorry, I need to talk about boy tears first before I move on to that, because then that's going to be my last word on this. I love this kind of thing, and I've t I'm tempted to try it. I just, again, I can't make decisions right now because I'm too overwhelmed. Do you want me to 
review boy tears because it's the kind of thing that I, it's hard to imagine not loving, but it is kind of interesting to think about what might be different about this or is there nothing different about this? Because there's just so much stuff like this on the market. A multi-use liquid shimmer. Like is boy tears going to outperform the Danessa Myricks color fix foil in Milky Way or the Charlotte Tilbury spotlight wand or the lethal cosmetics liquid eyeshadow that I recently tried that blew my socks off. If you want me to find out for you, tell me in the comment section down below. But the thing that I really love about this is that the description of the Monochromance palette says, inspired by his love of monochromatic color stories in art and exploring themes of total euphoria and heartbreak. With our multi-use makeup palette, we are exploring themes of total euphoria and heartbreak. I live for that. I just feel like I feel like we we do often see themes in makeup. Like it's it's not rare, right? Everything has a theme. ColourPop is like it's Star Wars themed. It's Candy Heart themed. Charlotte Tilbury is like, it's Hollywood glamour themed. Nobla is like, it's geometry themed, lines and squares, you know? And Hindash is out here being like, exploring themes of total euphoria and heartbreak. The theme is the vast reaches of the human heart, the potential of the human spirit to soar high into the sky and plummet to the depths of the ocean. And in order to explore these themes of total euphoria and heartbreak, I present to you six pans of colorful powder in an ombre design. I know it sounds like I'm making fun of it, but I really do love it. I love it the way I love monochromance. I just like that it's taking itself seriously in this way, in this like high art way. But we all know that it's just makeup and even it knows that it's just makeup. And then the thing that goes with it is called boy tears, which is such a like wink, 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 nudge, nudge. I mean, it's just, I don't really know Hindash. Like I don't watch his channel. Maybe I should. Maybe he's my soulmate. Moving on. Okay, I'm sorry I'm in I'm including another ColourPop palette. I'll I'll be quick. I just feel like it's an extension of the theme, right? We have it's a slightly pastel version, which is kind of the direction that we're going in. So we have the the reds and burgundies have been turned into sort of like a soft pink, but it's not all pastel, like clouds and golden. They're like these shiny, they are those burgundies, but they've been like watered down with a bunch of shiny stuff. There is definitely a really strong teal and even pick and mix is like also burgundy. So it's like all the same shades are here. They're just slightly desaturated versions of themselves, except for the teal, which is really strong and the purple like the Hindash palette. It's like when this color story starts to go wild on this side of the family, it gets a purple. But again, very, very in line with everything else. This is the candy, oh, this isn't ColourPop. That's my hot take. This looks like ColourPop. It's Makeup Revolution Candy Haze Collection, also candy themed. Okay, I just have one more palette to talk about in the context of this theme, the Natasha Denona Pastel Palette. And this one's a little bit of a stretch, right? We're, we're pulling it out to its furthest logical conclusion. But it's just worth mentioning that all of our colors that we've been discussing, they're all here. They're just, in, most of them in pastel versions of themselves. And there is a strong teal presence in this palette. Pastel, you could have pastel eyeshadows without necessarily having a teal, but this one has like three colors that are that are on the like mint teal spectrum. There's also a pretty strong burgundy, like pastel version of a burgundy presence, like pinks. But again, they're not all those candy pinks. They're that like mid-tone. It's like a pastel versions of pinks that have a tiny bit of brown in them which is what burgundy is, just like a really dark version of that. And even the purple that's in here, it's almost like it has a tiny bit of brown in it. So I just feel like Natasha Denona could have released a pastel palette that would have flown in the face of my theory. A pastel palette that like can't hang with all those other ones, doesn't come from the same family. But this one is a pastel palette that kind of does. And seeing it alongside everything else was part of what caused me to form this theory about this color story being popular right now. Those are all the palettes that I wanted to call out as kind of running along the same lines as each other. The good news when this happens 
is twofold. One, if you find yourself very attracted to this, knowing that everything is the same right now can help you put the brakes on because you can be like, wait a second, these palettes, no one, the reason I want to buy all five of these palettes is that they all look the same and I like the way that they look. And it helps you realize that you really truly only need the one if you don't have something like this already. For me, I think if I were in the market for something like this and I was suddenly like, oh my gosh, everywhere I look, all of the palettes are beautiful. They're all speaking to me. If I were going through that and I really wanted to buy one, I would probably narrow it down and end up buying the one from Nabla. I could imagine myself doing that. But the other part of the good news is that when you realize that the reason you're enjoying every new release or wanting to buy every new release, when you realize that the reason you're feeling that way is because the color stories all have something in common and it's really just that color story that you like, it kind of releases you from feeling like you have to have the palette itself it makes you realize that it's just about the colors. So you can drill down into that feeling and be like, well, what is it that I want? Do I just want teal? Is it just the combination of teal and red that's making me feel like I want to apply eyeshadow again? You know, if it is, maybe you already have a teal and maybe you already have a red. They might not be in the same palette side by side, but you might already have them. So you can dig through what you have and like do the, the eyeshadow looks you would be doing with these new palettes with what you already have. It's, I think it's easier to do that when there's a really clear trend in the palettes that are being released. It's easier to use shopping your stash or building your own palette to sate the desire for new stuff when they basically all look the same or like slightly different versions of each other. Moving on, I just wanted to give a shout out to a palette that I see on Trend Mood. The Trend Mood one Instagram account is usually what I'm referencing for this video. It's an Instagram account that posts new makeup. This Glaminatrix palette, it's interesting because it has some blue in it. It even has a shadow that could be called teal. It has some mustard and it has some like burgundy browns, but I feel like it's different in some way. If it is part of the family, it's really elevated. It's like the member of that family that became a movie star and now she's on the red carpet and she's going to the Oscars and she's gonna win. It's partly the textures. It's just got that delicious like indie eyeshadow, creamy, grungy glossiness. It's partly the intense, almost fluorescent blue, like cobalty sky Eve Clen blue of that matte shadow that's popping from it and kind of changing the context of everything else in the palette. When I saw this one, I was like, aha, this is the only one that's doing anything different from all of the other ones. And it's interesting that it has some eyeshadow colors in common even though that's the case. What I mean is even though it's the case that it, to me, it feels like it's doing something very different, it still has some eyeshadow colors in common with the trend right now. I think the reason that it feels super different is that there isn't, there just isn't that much that's very, very neutral. It doesn't have those sandy topes. It's like this color story isn't set in the context of six different beiges, taupey beiges, which like the Byredo one and the ColourPop one, most of the other ones were. If it were, maybe it would look more like them. But as it is, I just think it's very, very, very beautiful. And if I were truly, if I had, I don't know, $50 in my pocket, I don't know how much this is. Yeah, $54. If I had $50 in my pocket and I was like, I'm gonna buy an eyeshadow palette. I'm gonna buy one of the ones that Trend Mood just talked about. I might actually choose this one even over the Nabla one because it's so different. It's singing a different tune, if you know what I mean. I don't know anything about Glamnatrix though. I, I assume it's an indie brand because there are some people in the comments on this post saying, thank you for posting more about insti indie brands on um, Trend Mood, but that's all that I know. I'm, I'm not very familiar with the brand. I just think that this palette looks really pretty. Okay, so I'm going to do two more things before I end the video. One, I'm going to talk about the way that this color trend is extending into to other kinds of makeup. And then I'm gonna talk about one thing that is new to makeup that I want in spite of myself and I'm not even sure what's going on with that. I just feel like these days when you see something that makes you really want it, at least when I do, in the context of what I'm doing here, when I see something that makes me really want it, I like to try to unpack that with you. But first, the lips and the cheeks and the nail polishes in that in uh, in the high end and the low end, basically. So the, the Dior makeup release for spring, Summer <laughs> revealed Dior Summer 2022 coming soon. Do we feel like summer is coming soon? 
or is it just Dior summer makeup that's coming soon? I decided to talk about this partly because it does attract me, but mostly because some of the same colors, some of the, the color idea, the color feeling that we're getting from like the Byredo palette, the ColourPop palette, it's like those stony, slaty mauves, those brown, the brown versions of like mauves and blues. They're here in the lip products. And also the reds, those like the faded kind of like reddy, pale burgundy colors, they're here in the lip products too. And they're kind of like overlapping. So there's a color here in the very middle of like all the lipsticks lined up. There's a color that could be called like a, a grayish mauve, or it could be called like a faded burgundy, like a faded wine or like an ashes of roses type color. I like seeing that in a, a color range of lipsticks, but a lot of times it's like the cheese stands alone, you know, it's just that. In this case, I feel like it, it makes sense in the context of these colors. Like all the colors are a little bit grungily autumnal, but in a faded way, and it's interesting that they're releasing this for summer. I like it though. I like, if this is what's coming on the pipe, I'm here for it. I, I like it. Then the actual bullet lipsticks, one is like a true orange, like a, a light coral orange. And one is a really brown, true 90s brown. I love that. Those are like my two favorite colors for lipsticks. So really interesting. And I can totally see why the, I, I see how this fits in with the other colors that we've been seeing, even though these are lipsticks and those are eyeshadows. And then Maybelline has released Super Stay Vinyl Ink Longwear Liquid Lip Color. I feel like every lip color from Maybelline is called Super Stay or vinyl or ink. And this one is called all of them. But maybe this existed before. No, I think this is a new product. I just feel like it's the same. I don't know, maybe I just haven't been paying attention. Look at the colors. It's all burgundy, slaty mauve, dirty taupe, and some reds and pinks. And it just fits perfectly with everything that we've been seeing. So I wanted to point that out because I like like pointing out trends. And I also wanted to point out that if you're seeing those Dior lipsticks and you're like, oh my gosh, I need them so much, maybe check out the Maybelline release because there might be something comparable over here. Okay, the thing that I want, it's this Givenchy Prism Libre pressed powder. So the Givenchy Prism Libre powder, I don't know if I even have it over here. I have this limited edition one. It was PR like three years ago. And I don't use powder very often, but I have been using more powder lately, partly because I've been using slightly more emollient foundation products. And it's nice to just take them, take down the shine a tiny bit. I love this because it is the pale shade, which is called Mousseline Pastel. It has a green, a blue, a purple, and a white. And they blend together to be extremely color correcting for my fair and redness prone skin. I really, really, really like this powder. And I like the kind of like seamless porcelain finish that it leaves on the skin. My one complaint about it is that it's a loose powder, so it's really powdery. And I'm always, it's a little bit messy, right? I like open it, I take this out. Sometimes there's none in, I have to figure out how to tap it out. I just got it everywhere. It's messy, it's hard to control. And even though it has these four colors, it's a little bit hard to control which one you get. So for example, a bunch of powder just came puffing out and it's all blue. And sometimes I really want just the green one. And sometimes I really want just the translucent one. So I feel like there's a thing in here that it, that's very valuable to me as substance. And I really, really like it, but I struggle a little bit with its physical qualities. And now Givenchy is releasing the exact same thing in a compact, like a pressed powder version. It's exact, it's, it's like, I didn't know that that I wanted it. I had no, I wasn't over here thinking like, gosh, I really wish Givenchy would come out with this in a pressed powder version. But as soon as I saw it, I was like, I've been waiting for that my whole life. So this really puts my usual, I was gonna say perspicacity, but I don't think that's the right word. No, it's not. Perspicacity is a great word though. It means shrewdness, quality of insight. And I've been wanting to use it more lately that I've been thinking about that word and wanting to use it more, but this isn't the right time. <laughs> but this, put, this puts my usual, I've been sitting here for like a full 45 seconds trying to think of the word and I still can't think of it. Prudence, is that right? Is that what I mean? This puts my usual sagacity, my usual judiciousness, my usual 
abstemiousness, my usual forehandedness and sparingness to the test. I may or may not be using a thesaurus at this moment. I am usually not out here buying a, a slightly different version of a thing that I already have when there's a bunch of it left. Like this powder, but here's the thing, this powder is gonna last me forever because I've had it for years. It's the only powder I use pretty much and it's not even, I mean, I don't know how much there was before, but it, there's tons of it left. I feel like I have barely made a dent. When that's the case, it's like, am I gonna wait until this is gone to buy the one that would work better for me? No, because I'll, I'll be waiting until I'm 60. So maybe because that's the case, I can let go a little bit of my usual discretion when it comes to making these kinds of decisions. If it were like a cleanser or something, and I had a cleanser that I really liked, and then the brand came out with the same cleanser, but in a different format that was easier for me to use, I would totally just wait until I'd used up the cleanser that I didn't like as much before buying the other one because a cleanser, no matter how big the bottle is, if you use it and use it, you're gonna use it up eventually. With this, I actually feel like, I, I kind of feel like I'm never gonna use it up, you know? And it is a, it's a great powder, but it is kind of a pain in the butt. I might be talking myself into getting this different format of it when it is released. I don't think it's out yet, actually. It says it's available March or April on their website and retailers. I'm, I'll, I'll revisit when I find out how much it costs and when it comes into Sephora or something like that, I'll revisit. But I do want it because it's like, I, I want to use this every day, but sometimes the messiness keeps me from even opening it. And then, because I'm like, oh, I don't wanna deal with that today. That's my hot take. May or may not be splurging on this Givenchy pressed powder. But the most interesting thing going on right now, I think, in makeup, is that sandy, taupey, cool-toned, neutral palettes with grungy teals and burgundies of every saturation are seriously trending. It seems like I should probably just hop on the overhead camera and film a build your own palette with that color story because it's so obviously a thing. But I'm curious to know if you all have noticed the same thing. Do you have a palette already that looks like that? Are there some in the past that we might be able to say to people, oh, if you bought that, if you bought XYZ back in 2018, then you don't need this. Or if you didn't like that, then you probably wouldn't like these. What do you guys think about me spotting this trend? And are there any that are in line with this color story that I missed? I'm gonna go, should I come back to the middle? I'm gonna go. Uh, I appreciate you so, so much for being here. I really, really hope you're taking um, extra good care of yourselves. This is a particularly weird time for this to be my job. That's kind of like what I was getting at at the beginning. There are a lot of weird times. There are a lot of times when it's weird that this is my job. Um, and I just, I don't know. I thank you so much for kind of like thinking it through with me being there with me. And I know that all of you are probably experiencing your own version of this same kind of weirdness. And I just, my heart goes out to everyone, especially people who are directly affected by the violence in the world right now and who are really suffering. So sending a lot of love um, to all of you. And more than ever, don't forget to take extra good care of yourselves so that you can be the most effective versions of yourselves as you do your work in the world. 